Hi, it's Donna Robertson with Fabric Cafe. When it comes to binding a quilt, do you kind of scratch your head and wonder about all those little secret things that make bindings really a lot of fun? And what about saving on your fabric? We are going to show you how to do the economy binding. It uses half as much fabric and it makes such a pretty little binding. So let's get started. First of all, there are several things that I love. Things that I love, love, love working with and I think make binding so much easier. Now the first thing we're going to talk about are the binding clips. I love the binding clips. I do a lot of binding in a vehicle. While my husband is driving, I'm binding. And this is what I call the bloodless way of uh, doing a binding. I don't have to worry about straight pins and, pin and sticking myself or dropping a straight pin in the vehicle or if you're at home on a rug and then stepping on it. These are just a lot, lot safer. And uh, we will be using these during the presentation. Now, another thing that I love are the, the uh, thimbles. I like hand sewing. I also know that it's much easier for me to use a thimble that has a hard tip and it has this great silicone cuff. And if your needle gets stuck while you're doing your stitching, you can just grab the needle and pull. This becomes a needle puller. So it's always right there whenever you are ready for it. Now these are the thimbles. They come in three different sizes. They are either small, medium, and large. Uh, I actually use the large and we were laughing earlier because Hannah uses the very smallest ones. So you'll just kind of judge how big your hand is and what size thimble you would need. Now another thing that I like in the thimble department, and we're going to show you how to use these, are the thermal thimbles. When you're pressing your binding, you want a really good crisp uh, press, and these work wonders. It comes in three different sizes. I'm going to show you how to use these. I'll also show you how to put them on and off without damaging them. The next thing is, whenever you are pressing, you want a good crisp press, and this is called Best press. It is awesome. The small bottle puts out a nice mist and this is something that I don't know how I ever lived without was the Mary Ellen Best Press. I call it my binding best friend now because it gives me a really good crisp press without fl faking, flaking and you're going to like it a lot. All right. When you uh, are threading your needle, if you need a little extra help, the little needle beetle is a lot of fun. I'm also going to show you a different way to thread your needle in just a minute. It actually has a little light on it. So if you're having difficulty with your threading, you might try the little needle be beetle or the great for a gift if you want to get something for a, a quilting buddy. Um, two more things that we're going to show you are binding needles. Binding needles are a little bit longer and a little bit more flexible. You're going to like these. And the thread magic. I'm going to show you how to use both of those in just a minute. So the quilt we're going to do today, I'm going to show you how to do that economy binding. And we're going to start off with this adorable new fabric from Moda. And so it's a whole big old gang of snowmen out there. And um, the candy canes. Cute, cute. This is our a uh, pretty simple quilt and as you can see this is unfinished. We're going to fold it and put it up on the table. I'm going to show you how to do the economy binding. Now all of those tools and notions are available on our website. Just click on notions and tools at fabriccafe.com. All right, to start off with, you're going to use half as much fabric when you do our economy binding. We're going to cut a one and a quarter inch um, binding. Now some people ask me why did you do a one and a quarter inch binding. The reason I did that is because I was doing an economy quilt. I want you to get the whole quilt on the front. Your borders, your binding, and your quilt top out of just three one yard cuts of fabric. In order to do that, it takes a quarter yard of fabric for a single fold. It takes a half yard of fabric for a double fold. I decided since it was already an economy quilt that you can get, you can make 45 by 60 approximately and you want to have a bigger top, then you use this quarter, one and a quarter inch. First thing you do is you want to press that in half. Now, when you're pressing your, your binding, please 
do this for yourself. Use either the Mary Ellen Best Press or your favorite sizing for your fabrics. Make sure that you give them a good uh, spray. It doesn't flake. You're going to fold that in half just like this. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold this one side into the center. So I'm going to open this up so you can see what I've done here. So you can see that one quarter of an inch is folded to the inside and then it's folded over. So you, again, you will fold this to the inside and press. And if you're like me, you don't want to burn yourself, this is where you're going to use these awesome um, thimble, thermal thimbles. Now the best way to put them on is start off by pulling, folding that cuff over. You do that so that you don't rip the cuff off whenever you're putting them on. They're very flexible, but you can put one on one finger. They come in three sizes, and then you put one on your thumb. So that's how I put these on. I'm going to show you how to take them off in just a minute. Okay, so now you've got those on, and you take your iron. You want to give it a little spritz with your best press. You fold this into the center, and then you can take an iron while you are holding this in place. You can put your iron tip in there and move right down that until you've got this really good crisp turn. Now, to take those off, this is very important when you take these off. Uh, one customer called and she said she pulled the tip right off when she reached there and grabbed it and pulled it off. Well, the best way to take them off is just to roll it off. They just roll right off. They're so super easy and then they pop back out again. All right. Now we've got it all pressed and it's nice and crisp. And now we're going to start putting the binding on. The first thing you do, now again, this is the, the piece that's been uh, pressed. The first thing you want to do is put right sides together. You will set your machine for a scant quarter inch. A scant quarter inch is about one stitch more narrow than a quarter inch. I'm going to use my quarter inch foot to sew this on. So whenever I'm sewing, I want my uh, foot to be just about like that. So you can see a little bit. You can put a piece of tape up if you'd like. Uh, we use the uh, sewing edge. I use it a lot to mark my uh, scant quarter inch. So you're sewing this on right sides to right sides. And here's a trick that I just learned. You'd think that a woman who's been sewing for as many years as I've been sewing, uh, I'm only 29, but I've been sewing for 60 years. So <laughs> you can do the math. Uh, <laughs> I did start sewing very young. And um, just about maybe four or five months ago, Teresa Hadley from our shipping department came in and she said, I just learned this. And she was so excited. She said, did you know that this little spot right here will help you to judge your quarter inch when you're putting your bindings on? And I did not know that. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I start sewing. And as you know, you're going to be sewing your needles back here. And you're sewing, sewing, sewing. I lay a pin right at the edge of my fabric where it falls off. And as you're sewing, when your foot right here reaches that pin, you still have a scant quarter inch remaining. So you stop sewing right there, do a lock stitch, and you have the perfect space for mitering your corner. Love this little trick. I used to do a lot of measuring and peaking and so forth, but this is the best way to do that. Now you sew to right there, you stop, you lock stitch, and then this is how you miter your corner. You want to fold this back. It should make a straight line with the edge of your piece of fabric here. And then the one way you can do this, you just have to remember to take this pin out. You don't want to sew over your pins. So we're going to put a pin there to hold it. You then fold this back over like so. And I need to pull this over a little closer. I'm having a little difficulty with my, my vision from afar here. Okay, so once again, you are going to fold this over 
have a straight line there. You want to put a pin here to hold it in place. Fold this back. This will be exactly on top up here. It will be all along that edge down here. Now at that point, you can get another pin and you can put it out here or you can use one of the little clippies. I take this out so that I do not sew over that pin. This is what it should look like when you have that mitered perfectly. I'm going to bring another piece in here so that you can see what we have done. So this is exactly the same. Well, let me turn it around. This is exactly the same thing as this. You then start sewing right out here on the edge. Start right here and continue your scant quarter inch as you are sewing. So that's the way to miter your corners. Now when you're, when you're starting out with your strip, this is the other thing. When you begin sewing, you want to begin sewing and leave a tail. So you want this to be loose and I'm going to show you what you do with that when you join on the other end. So you sew this, you fold this over, you sew this in place. We are now on this step. We're sewing all around, mitering every single one of these corners are mitered. You sew around. When you get down to the end of your quilt, you've got that little tail you started out with, and then you've got this piece that's left over. Doesn't have to be a specific amount. I like about three inches, two to three inches down here. Now you're going to just take these two pieces, and I have to pull it closer again, John. <laughs> We're going to take these two pieces. We're going to bring them up until they meet and kind of, you know, manipulate a little bit with your fingers. And once they meet, then you can fold it over and kind of finger press that. All right, you're going to finger press it that way. So I do a little finger press. I pull this one back and I finger press it the other way. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to put a pin. I open it up and I put a pin so that the two pieces come together, just like that. You then take this, fold it in half, put one more pin to hold this out of the way. Now you've got this like so. These are pinned together. You can either do that finger press or you can mark it with a marker. Use a basting stitch and sew those two pieces together. So you pin this out of the way and then you sew those two pieces together and it looks like this. So we have that sewn together. Take your uh, pins out. You've basted it together. You want to make sure that it's not got any gaps in it whenever you're um, when you get through doing that. Okay, so that looks like it's, it's stitched in place. Now we're going to cut this and leave just a quarter inch. If you used a basting stitch to start with, you'll want to go back and give it a little stitch with a small stitch. You cut that little tail out of the way and then you're ready to sew this into place. And we're going to look at the quilt. This is where we did that on this quilt. So we brought the two ends together, we pressed it open, and then we sewed this into place. So that's the simplest way to put those together. Okay, now the fun begins. I sit down on the sofa, I prop my feet up, I get a cat beside me, I turn on my bright light, and I start binding. Okay, needle magic. Needle Magic is kind of a waxy, I actually don't know what this is, but anyway, it works really well. It doesn't leave any residue. And you can see all the lines on there. I've been using this. You just lay your thread on it, and then you can pull your thread back. See how you can just pull it right straight through. Put the lid back on. You pull out your tail. I use about 24 to 30 inches of thread, and then you thread your needle. Now, I like using my little needle case, and I'll thread two or three needles just so I can sit down and start sewing 
and I don't have to keep stopping and threading my needle. Put one knot in one end, get your trusty thimble on. I'm going to walk around to the edge of the table so that I can show you how to do this. And we've got our fun little clips. I love these clips. You want to fold this over, pull it to the back, just like so, and clip it into place. And I will do two or three of them. Now remember how you did your, your corners where you have that perfect little press over like that? You're just going to turn this. I sew from the right to the left. I like the back of the quilt facing me because I'm sewing this way. I like that best. Now, I do believe John told me that he was binding the opposite way one time. Is that what you told me? Yeah, I was uh, actually going from left to right. Did you ever try it going right to left? Uh, I don't think I did. Okay, well, you know, each of us have our own um, methods. Now, I'm going to take a contrasting thread just so you can see me do this. I like to take a little um, stitch within the binding. And then I take an extra stitch just to anchor that into place. Now we're going to go over to this side of the thread. The, we used a white thread here so you can't really see uh, where I stitch, but that's running right beside that little thread. I take one stitch backwards. So now we're going to insert our needle right up above that stitch. And I just do a little bit. It's about a quarter of an inch. Uh, you don't have to be real exact. I'd say a quarter of an inch to um, maybe a third of an inch. Okay, now I'm going to go back and I'm sliding that right along the stitch line and I slide that back through. A uh, little trick that I learned some time back. Now I've used the needle magic and the needle magic keeps it from um, getting tangled. But here's another trick for you. I put my thumb on top of that thread so that I hold it there until my thread is almost all the way to the end. And that is an extra insurance that I'm not going to tangle. So once again, you take that little stitch, put your thumb on top of that thread till it's almost dead at the end, and it will keep it from tangling. Now, that is how you do your stitches all the way around. Now we're going to miter that corner for you. Let me get another needle and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so we're going to anchor again and I'm just moving on down to the corner so you can see how that works. So we're doing a little stitch. We're going to do one back tack just to get ourselves started again. And we are now going to sew down to the end using that same technique. We're just taking little bitty stitches. And like I said, like a fourth to a third of an inch. I have now taken the last stitch coming out at that stitch line. We're going to now stitch backwards. We're turning our corner and we're just going into the uh, quilt portion, not into the binding portion. I take one stitch down. I will then kind of finger press my miter. If you've done it the way I've showed you on the other side, it's going to be beautiful. I've got a little extra thread. We'll trim that off in a moment. I then go back into that binding. I take it up to the corner and then back into the quilt. So I've now actually anchored my thread on that mitered corner. And this is a good place to pull with that needle puller. Okay, now turn and we are off to the races now because it's smooth sailing all the way down to the other end. If you want to do this on your machine, 
you will sew your right side to the wrong side of your quilt. Turn it to the front and you will do your stitching on the front side of the quilt with your machine. Now we're going to stop long enough to trim this off. And there is your mitered corner. Looking pretty good on that side. Turn it over. Looking pretty good on that side too. So it's that simple. You just continue on around and you can get your quilt uh, sewn in just a few hours when you're making a three yard quilt. So it's Donna Robertson with Fabric Cafe. If uh, you like this quilt, it's a brand new one. It will be out probably in a few more weeks. We don't have the fabric yet, but if you want to go to the website, you can uh, visit Fabric Cafe. You can either do the kit number or the name. Just search for that. Click on email me when this kit is in stock and we will do just that. As soon as that fabric comes in, you will be one of the first ones to receive the information about ordering this kit. So the pattern is free when you buy the fabric and these are the three fabrics that we have. These adorable snowmen, the wonderful candy canes, and that fun dot. So it's Donna Robertson with Fabric Cafe. We hope you've enjoyed uh, this little demonstration of how to do the economy binding with three yard quilts. Have a great evening. Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell.